Glad you could join us as we celebrate the Liturgy of the Word for Wednesday of Holy Week. Now, starting tomorrow, we will be live streaming uh, the Masses, Holy Thursday, the Liturgy, for which is not Mass, for Good Friday, and Easter Vigil, and also Easter Sunday morning. So you're welcome, most especially, to join us during those liturgies if you're here in Johnstown. And we'll have room for everybody because we have overflow into the hall where we'll be live streaming everything over in the hall. We'll be washing feet in the hall. Uh, we'll be doing everything there uh, that we're going to be doing in the church, too. We did it last year. We did it two, two years ago, and, and uh, it worked out really, really well. We kind of tried to bring everything together. And uh, so we're about to enter into uh, the Holy Three Days kind of getting more excited for all that as we go. And, and may I just mention quickly, the whole idea of the Paschal Fast is you get so excited for an event. that something has happened. You don't worry about food so much. You're just eating the, what you need to do and, and you kind of go on and you get yourself really, really prepared for all things. So here we are. Let's, let's, let's just begin this today. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. Ah, oh, gosh, this God of ours, what he has done for us. Let's ask him for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you were betrayed, Lord have mercy. You were scourged, Christ have mercy. You died on the cross, Lord have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near, who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disp disputes my right, let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. In your grace. bear insult and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall on me. has broken my heart and I am weak. I looked for sympathy but there was none. For consolers not one could I find. Rather they put gall in my food and in my thirst they give me vinegar to drink. Praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own, who are in bonds, he spurns not. Hail to you, 
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at, t at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it's not I, Lord. And he said, Reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better if that man had not been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said to him, Surely it is not I. Rabbi, and he answered, you have said so. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin, first of all, um, by talking about this third suffering servant song that you and I have just heard. And let me just share a couple things about this one. First of all, you see it's moved from a plural to singular in all this. And first of all, it was plural. Now it's singular. It's a suffering servant and one unique uh, aspect of the suffering servant now in this third one, as you listen to this, is this suffering servant suffers in the place of others who have sinned, which is what Jesus did. And second of all, his radical dependence on God. Brothers and sisters, that is where we're all headed. This radical, radical dependence on God in our lives, in our struggles, our difficulties, as Jesus did the same thing and, as we know, raised him from the dead. But this was his unique mission, to die on the cross, uh, uh, different from our struggles. And, and we'll talk about that as things unfold. In morning prayer, I know I'm going to talk about that at least one time. What's the difference between our struggles and Jesus' struggles? And there's one big difference about that, is that our struggles are dying to our false self. Jesus didn't have a false self. So uh, the cross was sort of part of that for him. And if you come to the morning prayer, little little advertisement there uh, for one of these days, we'll talk a little bit about that on those and that day as well. But let's get to the gospel here today in Spy Wednesday, the day Judas betrays Jesus. And we've talked about this the last two days. Jesus, or excuse me, Judas being someone who was uh, uh, politically corrupt. Now, I want to say, give a little, dis, you know, Politics are part of human life. We can never get rid of politics. It's just part of human life. It's just sometimes it gets corrupt, it gets dirty, kind of like a lot of things. And, and Judas seemed to be willing to dabble in that dirty side of politics. And yesterday we talked about the fact that he made a choice. It was night. And night was, uh, Satan came into him. He actually made a choice to step over to the other side. And that's when he decided he was going to betray Jesus. And uh, isn't it interesting in all of this how the other disciples never thought Judas was that guy? Uh, he was their colleague. He was their friend. He traveled with them for three years. They never thought he was the guy that was going to do this. So he kept all this secret. So in one sense, you could say, Judas kind of led a dual life. He has this dark, deep part going on here that nobody else even knew about. 
And a lot of times people, people like me, like, like priests, we have, we have a look. Sometimes, as you know, you know, people in public life have a, they don't deal with their selves very well. They begin to believe their persona who's who they are. And so they, they, they forget what dealing with their own inner world. So Mark Bagley has to figure it out. So Father Mark Bagley can do the stuff he's supposed to do, not the other way around. Uh, I'm Mark Bagley first, the baptized child of God. Father Mark Bagley for all of you. And uh, so it seems like he kept this dark side of him very, very secret in a way, which is also uh, things that uh, a lot of times we might do, but not the best thing if we do them. So why did Jesus do it isn't so much the great question, because I want to say to you that his betrayal wasn't his greatest sin. His greatest sin was his despair. Peter betrayed Jesus. But he didn't enter, he wept, wept. As a matter of fact, one author said that every time Peter talked about what he did in betraying Jesus, he wept. As I'm sure that Judas, but, Ju but he didn't despair. But Judas did. So, what about God's love? What about God's forgiveness and all this? This is the part we haven't talked about in all this yet. And let me share with you a little story, if I may. A little legend if I can, about Judas. As the story goes, Judas found himself, after he committed suicide, in this dark, slimy pit. And there, for a thousand years, he wept in, in sorrow and in despair over what he had done to Jesus. Um, thousands of years goes by. All of a sudden, Judas notices there's a light at the top of this dark, slimy pit that he's deep down inside. And so he looked at it for a thousand years and wondered, could I ever, ever find light again in my life? So gradually, slowly, he begins to try to climb out of this dark, slimy pit. And every time he goes to climb up the sides to this light, he falls back down again. Tries again, falls back down again. Tries again, falls back down again. One time he gets almost to the very, very top to, get, to, to go out into the light, whatever this light is, and he falls all the way back down again. And again, he just weeps bitterly over his grief, his inability to repent. All, it's repent. He repents. He repents. And, 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 and uh, just, well, he finally gets up courage again after thousands and thousands of years to climb up this from the, the side of the slimy uh, dark pit and gets to the top. And somehow he climbs up out of this pit into the light. And where is he? All of a sudden. He finds himself in the upper room. There's Jesus. There's the other disciples. And they all look at him. They have a smile on their face. And Jesus says to Judas, as he climbs up out of the pit, he says to him, we were waiting for you, Judas. We couldn't, we, we couldn't begin until you came. I wonder if even the likes of Judas cannot escape God's mercy. God bless you, folks. We're looking forward to celebrating the Holy Three Days with you. Join us in person if you can. Um, join us online if you can't. We're glad to be able to share all of this with you as we begin to, um, Holy Thursday, penetrate this God who is Master and Lord, but goes to the bottom and washes feet. The, the thing that the lowest, lowest of slaves to, washing feet. So join us for that. Good Friday, Easter Vigil. What a remarkable journey the whole thing is going to be. Here's my questions for today. What are your thoughts about Judas? What are your thoughts about the fact that Judas actually ultimately repented and, and opened himself up to God's mercy? And secondly, are you prepared to celebrate fully the Holy Three Days? God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you in Liturgy of the Word on Monday in the octave of Easter. But until then, let's enjoy the Holy Three Days together. Goodbye now.